My shop sits on a 40 by 40 concrete slab and the perimeter of the shop is 30 by 40, which leaves roughly 10 feet by 40 feet on one side for a full length lean to. And we've been using the front of this space for grilling and entertaining when we have friends and family over. There's, there's just a little bit more elbow room out here than there is in the house. Uh, but this space is divided into a front and a back space by an above ground concrete tornado shelter. We have tornadoes in Mississippi, unfortunately. So this is definitely one of those things that you'd rather have and not need than need and not have. It's reinforced concrete, it was put there by a crane, and it's not going anywhere. Moving it is out of the question. Behind the tornado shelter is where I've hid all of the lawn and garden utility stuff since we've moved in, and I've, I've never put any effort into organizing it, it's just been a pile of clutter. The goal here is to organize this space with some basic utilitarian shelves, so I can free up some more space in the front to hopefully build an outdoor entertaining space. The shelves do not need to be pretty or have any fancy joinery. The goal here is just basic, multi-purpose shelves with no specific holders. I wanted these shelves to be fast to put together, so both the shelf length and the shelf height are eight feet long. I'm getting two by six by eight boards and two by four by eight boards. This means very few cuts. The Home Depot sent me this Milwaukee 18 volt framing nailer as part of their Home Depot partner and Home Depot Pro Perspective program. And I'm using a five amp hour battery for this build. So the entire build was done with this one battery and by the end of the day, I was only down to two out of four bars for battery life which I thought was pretty impressive considering how many nails we fired. There's a dedicated power button so the nailer can't accidentally be fired if it's turned off, and you have the option of a single fire or a bump fire mode. We used bump fire mode for this entire build because not only is it faster, but honestly, it's, it's just a lot more fun. Step one, remove all of the junk. It is crazy how fast stuff can pile up when you do not have an organization solution. And normally I call situations like this controlled chaos, but there was no control here. It was just chaos. One of the main reasons I want to get a lot of the clutter off the ground is because it's much easier to blow out all of the dust and grass clippings with nothing in the way. And speaking of the leaf blower, my daughter loves this thing. She always comes up running when she hears it being used. She loves anything that makes noise. Press the button. Here, I'll tell you what, I'll set it right here for you to press the button, okay? There you go. I guess this is going to keep the button. Yeah, that's pretty good. Next up, these slabs that I have can be unburied from the walkway between the shop and the tornado shelter. I've got a nice pecan crotch slab, a curved Osage orange slab, and a decent size hickory slab to work with for some upcoming stuff. But one thing I want to do is to stop, 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 stop using this little walkway space for storage. I've realized that this small little storage space is a place where things go to die and to never be seen again. The last time I saw these slabs was when we moved in and I put them there. With the outdoor space clean, we can take the 2x4s inside to make all of our cuts. We need 16 shelf end supports and 6 middle shelf supports. Batching out these cuts at the miter saw was the only work done inside the shop for this project. Rather than measuring a bunch of times, I laid out the location of all these shelf supports on one 2x6 and then used a square to transfer the location to all of the other leg pieces, making sure to reference off of the original marked board. And of course, the boss lady needs to supervise. This is the first actual project where my daughter really wanted to get involved, which is, is pretty exciting to me. Of course, you know, I want her to take her own path in life, but the interest she is showing in doing what daddy is doing really, really, really makes me feel good. With all of the legs marked, I started adding the shelf supports, and in this situation, I'm only nailing the outside 2x6s. The middle two are just there because there's really no need to move them, 
after marking them. On the second leg assembly, I attached the shelf supports with one nail first so that it could be used as a pivot point to make sure the arm was square. Should have done this on the first one, but this is one of those builds where the knowledge of doing the process the first time allows you to streamline or make the next one a little bit more efficient. Now, if the shelf supports are secured and square to the first leg piece, all we need to do for the second leg is to make sure that it lines up with the ends of the shelf support and nail it in place. Rinse and repeat for the last two leg assemblies. It's time to connect the legs with the shelves. And again, we're learning how to do this the hard way first by trying to assemble it standing up. Luckily, we had a pole to lean against on one side, but it was still kind of awkward trying to get the other side to uh, line up properly. The shelf boards are just nailed on with three nails per board. And here, it was kind of crazy how fast we were going through nails, but then again, we're using a nail gun and not a hammer, so of course things are gonna go fast. With that said, we did not have a single misfire or a single nail that wasn't driven all the way home, which was pretty nice. Even my battery-powered Brad nail gun doesn't have this kind of consistency. With the first shelf in place, I went up to the next level where I instantly realized a roadblock. I wanted these shelves to be up against the back of the tornado shelter, but I failed to take into consideration the plate over the air vent. I also realized we were building it backwards with the brace gap or the little gap that I included in the back side of the, of the assembly. It was facing outward. After twisting around the whole shelf and measuring for the air vent, a notch was cut with a circular saw onto the backmost shelf board on the middle shelf. It's not quite a precision mortise and tenon fit, but it worked. Here's where we realized that laying it down would have made the entire process a lot easier. We had to lay it down to put the top shelf on. So the top shelf is installed first, followed by the diagonal bracing. The bracing is added after measuring corner to corner to verify that the assembly is square. And I, I really wanted the, the bracing to be symmetrical just from a visual standpoint. But as you can see, the air vent is in the way, so we kind of had to skew them slightly. Three nails per attachment point and a quick trim of the excess with a circular saw. Now the middle shelf supports are added and these are just nailed on with a few nails from below. The whole point here is to kind of lock the shelf slats or the shelf boards together rather than them having to support weight individually. After the shelves are upright, I'll add some nails on a kind of an, on an angle from above. Time for the fun part of lifting it back into place. And I'm not sure how much it weighs, but it was definitely heavier than I expected. The second one was assembled completely on the floor and a million times easier. This is when I also realized that my friend John wasn't wearing safety glasses. So shame on me for not noticing that earlier. Uh, I passed my safety shades over to him and let him do the easy work of nailing while I brought over the rest of the lumber for the shelves. It's the same process of nailing the diagonal bracing on with three nails per connection point, followed by trimming the excess off with a circular saw. The last piece of the puzzle before standing it up was to add the center shelf supports. The second assembly took about, I don't know, half the time of the first one. It was, it was definitely one of those, you know, learn from the first one and do it the hard way first kind of a project. Once upright, I added more nails to the top side of each one of these center shelf supports. After wiggling them into place, I locked them together with a couple long screws. And I chose screws here just in case I wanted to change the orientation of the shelves in the future. I doubt that I would ever do something like that, but removing a screw would be much easier than a framing nail in this situation. And lastly, the super duper fun part of loading all the heavy stuff back up. Keep in mind that these are just super basic storage shelves, so some items aren't exactly optimally stored. For example, I have a shelf for my battery powered string trimmer and hedge trimmer, and it would probably be a better use of space to store them vertically but I didn't want anything specific. This gives me the greatest long-term flexibility as things change, which they're known to do. Things are always changing. The top shelf is eight feet tall, so it's for long-term storage, stuff that I won't access frequently at all. The middle shelf is for stuff that isn't too heavy to lift. I, I kind of already have a bad shoulder and don't really want another one. 
and the lower shelf is for common stuff and heavy tools. I also chose the height of this lower shelf to aid in putting on and taking off my backpack leaf blower and my backpack sprayer. And of course, all the grilling wood can go on the ground below the lower shelf. I also needed one spot on the ground for my pressure washer. With everything loaded up, there is enough open space to not only store the lawnmower, but also to have a walkway to easily access everything on the shelves. And in case you're wondering, it takes longer to smoke a rack of ribs on my grill than it did for us to do all of this work. We started the day by putting some ribs on the grill and we finished the day by eating them, which was also a lot of fun. Let's go eat some ribs. This is a very basic design that I'm sure you can figure out on your own, but if you'd like to get the SketchUp file for this, there's a link in the website article for this build. And be sure to go to my website, jacecustomcreations.com slash newsletter to sign up for my email newsletter so you don't miss any of the other stuff that I publish. That's it for this one. Have a great day, and I'll talk to you in the next video.